here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to take a look at this month's Smart Art Box and they are sponsoring this video. You can find out more about their company and what they have to offer with their monthly subscription boxes at smartartbox.com. I will have it linked in the video description and uh, they ship to many countries all over the world so you, chances are, you can get it where you live. So this month's box we have, um, first we have a brochure that talks about the, um, the products a bit and I don't want to look at it too much but it says it is street art so street art projects and it has one in there for you to for you to follow and it tells you about the different products that we're going to see here so we have mural paint markers these remind me of um kind of like bingo daubers it's got a dauber top and we have red yellow and blue we have our primary colors and this color here, Rockstar, which is a silver. So we'll get those started in a minute so that we can use them. We have a set of three Tombow drawing pencils. These are the mono drawing pencil set and I haven't used these pencils so that'll be fun to try out. I have used other Tombow products and I do enjoy them. We have a cradled what appears to be birch panel here, unprimed. It looks like it's sealed though, just unprimed for us to work on. And we have a couple brushes. We have a, a number 10 Pro Stroke uh, hog brush and we have a little spot touch brush for tiny, teeny, teeny detail. Look how lot, little that is. Tiny, tiny. So I am going to give these paints a good shake and get the paint flowing off the, through the daubers and we'll be back to start our project. Okay, now I am going to admit this is probably the trickiest smart art box for me to use yet. I'm starting off by squeezing the um, paint onto a piece of plastic to use as a palette. And I thought I'm just going to sketch on kind of like a comic book girl face and it'll be really cool because I've got nice bright colors and we'll begin from there. As you could tell from the beginning of the video, in the thumbnail I ended up painting Chinese lanterns, which is a type of plant. Um, to say this didn't go well would be an understatement, but I did start off by sketching the uh, a face in with some pencils, and then I decided to go in with some of the paint. And like a crazy person, I thought I would just go right in with a dabber top and see how that worked. And I think it would have worked really well if I was doing a really big painting on like a wall or something like these um, paints are meant for. But on this 8x10 canvas, it was just really hard to control. And the other thing I found was that I was muddying up the kind of dauber top of my... Um, um, my applicator bottles because they were pulling up too much of the other paint. So you really want to be careful of that. If you have this kit, make sure that you um, don't muddy up those tops. I think you could take them off and wash them with like some soap and water, but you could see there that I had to like squeeze out that red dauber onto my palette to kind of clean it. And um, you'll see a little bit later when I went back to work with those daubers, they were dirty and, and difficult to get clean to get clear colors. So then I thought I might blend with a brush. It just made it worse and I ended up just having a big streaky muddy mess. I couldn't even bring out any brightness with that silver color. So I just decided that um, I was going to tone the entire um, the entire piece and see if I could make anything on top of that. I tried one final time to bring the portrait back around by using um, some of the silver paint on that really tiny spotter brush to sketch in um, the face, but that tiny brush holds so little paint that I found it very frustrating to go in and do that. Um, but if you did want to do a portrait, this would be kind of a way you could do it. I think though what I'm going to do now is take something from outside of the box, literally, so I can rescue this painting. After having struck out just using the colors that were in my box, I grabbed some white paint and just, or white gesso rather, and just um, spread it all over the panel. It ended up picking up some of the blues and greeny mixes from the um, wet paint underneath, and it gave me a pretty kind of pale grayish blue tone that I could easily paint on top, and that's what you're going to see in today's tutorial. Now the nice thing about this smart art box is that it contained primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. The thing that wasn't so hot was that the birch panel was not primed with like a gesso, so anything I painted on there got really dark and muddy quick. So uh, now that I had this dry background with my addition of, um, of the white paint, I could work on it quite easily. And I actually took some white acrylic from a past smart art box, the acrylic box from, I think it was last December or January. Um, I find that it made really beautiful colors when I mixed it with the primaries that I had. So I just started by sketching on a brown branch that I got from mixing the three primary colors and then I sketched on a little leaf. 
I got the idea to do Chinese lanterns because they're orange, and orange is the opposite of blue, and I ended up with kind of like a gray tealish blue when I added gesso on top of the wet paint from my failed attempts at this kit to begin with, and I just thought that would be a great way to um, have kind of like a fall themed painting uh, that would have some really nice colors in it and would work well with the supplies that came in the kit. Now I did have to grab a couple other brushes because the brushes that came with that were definitely designed for mural painting, the huge number 10 uh, round hog brush. That's a really big brush and it's um, really stiff too, so it would be much better if you were trying to paint something that was not smooth, like a, um, if you're trying to do a wooden or concrete wall. Um, so it's perfect for that, but for this very smooth panel I had, I needed something a little bit softer and finer, so I just went with like a number six round brush. I put a few little stems kind of off the main stalk to hold my Chinese lanterns and I'm just adding the detail to a couple of leaves just to do the lanterns if you wanted to but I think that you need kind of um, something else to kind of bridge the gap between all that blue in the background and those bright orange lanterns. I decided to do all of my painting from the palette so it's really easy all you have to do is squeeze the um, the daubers right onto the palette and push it against it while you squeeze it and you can get a nice little puddle of paint there. And then I was able to mix all of my colors right there on my palette paper. So after I kind of got the idea of where my lanterns were going to be, I had used the yellow just to throw in and reserve a little bit of a highlight. And then mixing red and yellow together, I made the body color of the lanterns. As you can see, I'm filling in that one at the top of the, um, of the page. In all honesty, this painting took me about 45 minutes to paint. Um, not counting the big mess that I made before I started the lantern section. So uh, that's why I'm speeding it up because there's a lot of repetition that I think would be quite dull to watch in real time. So I basically just varied my oranges by using first red and yellow, but then I would add some white to it and I'd add a little more yellow to some and a little more red to some just so I could get a, a variety of tones and it would help make the picture a little bit more interesting. So you need that contrast between the dark um, plummy red of the shadows and the uh, bright peachy orange of the highlights. So I went in and just kind of fleshed out and filled in my little lanterns until I was happy with how they were placed. Now that I have all of the main elements down on the paper, I can start to work on refinement. So I basically mixed up a very pale green and added a little bit of my brownish mix to it to make a really, really light tan and added a highlight to the stock. I'm taking that white creamy yellow, so it's a yellow plus white, and adding some highlights to the different sections of the, um, the lanterns to kind of give them that papery segmented kind of paper lantern look. And I found that by using a, a soft flat brush, it helped me achieve that look much better. Don't worry that everything still looks really choppy and blocky at this point, because we're gonna take out that tiny little brush that came in the kit and we're gonna be adding details later. Right now, I'm just trying to get the shape and the form and the uh, chunks of color down that I want. So you wanna keep doing that until you're happy with the way your lanterns look. I'll put a photo in the video description, a link to some Chinese lanterns, so you can take a look at them and um, have something to look at while you're painting, if, the, if my painting isn't clear enough for you. Now I'm going through with just white, and by using white on its own, I have the super, super brightest um, value that I can have, and that's going to give an extra bit of light um, and roundness to certain areas of the picture. So as long as you can be subtle with those values and build them up to a really, really dark, and then all the way up to a really bright light, then you get a lot of depth in your picture and it becomes very easy to communicate shape and shadows and all of those lovely things that we like to put in our paintings. Now we wanna to switch to a smaller brush and look at some of the places we can refine in our design, such as uh, adding highlights to our little red stems that connect the lanterns to the stock and adding veining in our leaves. Remember to adjust your values. So by going along the edge and doing them in a very light, creamy, kind of spring green, yellowish color, I'm able to help them kind of pick up and look almost like they're backlit. And that just gives them a little bit more life. You need to go any place you see any big, dark patches and adjust them so they kind of go with the other elements in your picture. Another thing that small brush is good for is adding some texture into the lanterns. So what I can do is just pick up a little bit of paint and make little wiggly strokes on the sides of the lanterns and it looks as if the light is kind of hitting some of that texture and reflecting back. So that's how you get that little kind of wrinkly papery look to the edge of the lanterns. I started off doing it in the light color and then I switched on to the oranges and reds to really build up the depth of color here in this piece. 
And really that's the bulk of what this step is. You just keep on building until you're happy with the amount of colors that you've built up. Now at this point, I've got too much white in the bottom too. And as I tip it and I get rid of the glare, I can really see that. So I think it's kind of important to either adjust your painting or to take a break from time to time so that you can really see how it's developing. I'm going in now with a little more uh, darker colors, kind of like a plummy red that I've mixed with the red, blue, and a little touch of yellow. And I'm just continuing those wiggly strokes up from the bottom of each of the lanterns to just give it that texture that I want. So there's so many different elements at play. We have um, the shape of everything, which we get from the drawing. We have the form, which we get from light and shadow. We have the colors and the values um, that we get with different colors of paint. And we have the texture the visual texture that we're putting on with this tiny brush and we have the previous smooth texture like on the leaves that we put with the bigger brush so when you use all these different elements of design in your painting you can really convey just about anything that you want to now that that lantern i'm working on in the center there that is just about done and that's what i'm shooting for on the other ones but try not to make every lantern look the same you also want a little bit of variety um, you want that repetition i have five objects there the odd number is automatically pleasing to us but you want um, each lantern to be a little bit different you don't want five that are identical you want rhythm and repetition without everything being too samey does that make sense just some things to think about the next time you're painting um, with whatever media you like to paint with if you would like to get a surprise box of art supplies delivered to your door every month I cannot recommend smart art box highly enough I've been enjoying their boxes for the past year and I'm always looking forward to what new surprises they have in store for me. Now this one was a challenge, I have to admit. I, I did have to add white paint to it to make it all come together at the end, but um, it really kind of pushed me to try something new. Even though it didn't end up working out the way I expected at the beginning of the video, it still was fun and I enjoyed it so much. So I think it's a great way to spend 50 bucks, quite frankly. It's a great way to uh, give yourself a little present every month. I'll have a link in the video description so you can subscribe for yourself or just go see what they have to offer. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Until next time, happy crafting.